from here this is a question a car starts from rest and accelerates with six meter per second squared to reach a velocity of 40 meter per second it's a calculate the distance covered by the car good you take the same approach from here a car starts from rest the first thing you must understand is that from solution understand that if a body starts from rest the initial velocity of that body is zero for you to start from rest for you to start from level zero for your velocity to start from level zero it shows that that velocity is zero so when they, when they tell you a body starts from rest you the value of initial velocity is zero but when they also say the body comes to rest it shows that the value of v which is the final velocity is also zero so take note of this too it starts from rest u is zero it comes to rest v is zero good from here what does that mean it means that u is equal to zero because it says a car starts from rest and accelerates what's the value of the acceleration a so what's a now a will give us six meter per second speed. now continue to reach a velocity of 40 meter per second what's this velocity this velocity is not u it is v it is final velocity to reach a velocity of 40 meter per second good so calculate the distance covered by the car okay the distance is now a problem that's what we're looking for good we'll go back to our equations one two three four so out of the four of them who's going to do it from here u a v s so which of them will suit this equation so from here you have v you have s you have v and you have s so oh this equation there's no value of time here so by this time here, no this can do it this can do it, this can but this can do it so because of that using v squared is equals to u squared plus 2 a s the V stands for final velocity, U for initial velocity, A for acceleration, and S for distance travel. So from there you have V. What's the value of V? You have 40 squared is equals to U is 0 squared plus 2. What is A? 6. And S is not known yet. So from here we have 40 squared will give you 1,600. We have 0 plus 2 times 6, that will be 12, times S, that will be S. So from here we have 1, 6, 0 is 12 S. We'll divide here by 12, we'll divide here by 12. 12 cancel 12. So S now will be 1, 6, 0, 0 divided by 12. Let's take that. From here we have if four go here we have three and if four go here surely we will have if two go there we have eight and if two go again we have four. So that's four. So we have four zero zero divided by three. So from there you have 4, 4, 2. So that gives us 1 as 100, 3 as 3, 3, again, so probably 0.3, all in meters. Good. Um, that's the value of that. So from there, we'll continue with... Graphical, graphical interpretation of linear 
motion. Graphical interpretation of linear motion. The first thing is, if, for example, I'm told that distance in meter against time t, if this gives me a straight line graph, automatically my slope here is going to give me distance over time, which is equal to speed. So the graph of distance against time, the slope of that graph will be equal to speed. The value of the slope of distance against time is speed. So, as a good student, you will now understand that in the case of displacements, displacement, displacement against time, If it's something of this nature, the slope will be displacement over time, which is equal to velocity. So, the slope of gradient of a displacement time graph is velocity. The slope of gradient of a distance time graph is speed. So when you plot distance against time, the slope of gradient will give us speed. When, it, when you plot displacement against time, the slope of gradient will give us velocity. Good. Now, more graph will come up. When you have something of this nature, if you have a graph that, uh, you have something like this, I have a graph that goes like this. A bit displacement against time. What you have here is that the gradient or slope is equal to zero. For whether a displacement time graph or a distance time graph, the gradient or slope we must equal to zero. Good. Now, if that is the case, let's now consider another situation where we are having this other one like velocity and you have time. If it's velocity, if you plot velocity time graph, so, from velocity time graph, the slope or gradient of a velocity time graph becomes velocity divided by time, which will give us the value called acceleration. So, remember, when you plot a graph of velocity against time, what the result you get is acceleration. Now, from there, it's easy for you to say that in a velocity time graph, the total distance traveled is always found under the graph. Now, let's consider it. The three things you can measure using or calculate using a velocity time graph. Okay. Parameters you can measure or car 
calculate using a velocity time graph. Let's see those parameters. The first parameter you can measure is velocity itself. The second one is acceleration stroke deceleration. And the last but not the least is total distance traveled. So the velocity time graph you can calculate or measure the velocity. You can do the same thing to acceleration or deceleration. And you know the deceleration is also called retardation. And the last is total distance traveled. And, uh, so from there you get so but ignore of this Example. Let's see example three, velocity time graph. From this example, for example, I'm giving a velocity time graph that gives me something of this nature. Give me something like this, give me something like this, and give me something like this. That's a velocity time graph. Yeah. And from here, I had something like this. Maybe this was four. This was four. And this is meter per seconds. And this is time. In seconds, you know, yeah. Okay, from here, I have that. Probably from here, at least zero. From here, I have um, eight. I have sixteen. And from here, I have two. You have uh, twenty. Okay. So. Okay, from the graph above, calculate one acceleration, two deceleration. I may use retardation this time. So that you are not just used to deceleration, but sometimes you use retardation. And the last one is the total distance traveled. Okay. All set. Let's start from here. Solution. Let's start from here. Now, from here you observe something that the acceleration of the body is simple. What's the acceleration? It's just this, this, and this. What's that value? From here to here is 8. And from here to here is 4. And the same distance from here to here is 4. Distance to here is 4. So it is the height divided by this. So from there, the acceleration, the acceleration of the body is equal to the distance of the height, which is velocity divided by time. Velocity divided by time. Velocity divided by time. The time for the first movement when he accelerated, he accelerated from zero down to the highest point. What was the highest point? It was four meter per second. And what time did it take him to do that? He did that in 8 seconds. Because of that, what is acceleration? Velocity divided by time. What is the velocity that he accelerated? The velocity is 4. And what is the time he used in accelerating? The time is 8. So the acceleration will be equal to 0 0.5 meter per second squared. That's the first. Now, The second one is simple. Take it from there. 
Question two now. If you look at their retardation, when he got here, he started retardating. He started decelerating. He started to fall. He started to come to rest. At that point, what time did it take him to do that? From 16 to 20. And what's the difference between 20 and 16? The difference between 20 and 16 is 4. That's the difference in between. And the highest level of his height was still at 4. 4, 4. So from here, what's this acceleration? Is acceleration or retardation? Retardation. Retardation is equal to 4 divided by 20 minus 16, which is 4 over 4, which is 1 meter per second squared. Good. Now, the last one is the distance traveled. The total distance travel is simple. What's the total distance travel? The total distance traveled is equal to the area under the graph. So the total distance travel is the area under the graph. The area under the graph, what kind of area is this? Looking at it from your figure. Even at primary school, we already know that this figure is something they call a trapezium. Trapezium can take different shapes. It can look like this, just like this one, and it can also be like this. That's a trapezium. But this is a trapezium. So, but it depends on how you want to do your calculation. You can split it into three. This is a triangle, a triangle, and a square. So, but all together, they constitute a trapezium. So, it will serve as a trapezium. So, the area of the trapezium is equal to total distance travel. So, what will that become? That's half AB times height. So, half. What is this A and B? The A and B is the distance, the length between this side, these distances. So from here to here, this 16, this is 8. What's the difference? 8. So automatically, this place is 8. So from here to here is 20. So those are the two sides. The two sides, we have 8 plus the other side is 20 times the height between all the height from where it accelerates to where it decelerates, the height still remain 4. So from there, we'll have times 4. So our total will become 8 plus 20, that gives us 28, 2 here 1, and 2 here 2. So that's 28 times 2. So 28 times 2, 2 here that will give us 16, that's 6, 1, 4, that's 5, 6, all in meters. So the total distance traveled is equal to the area of the trapezium which he created and that, that value give of 56 meter. Good. Now, when you are taking calculations that has to do with area under a velocity time graph, bulk of the questions you have at this year level comes as trapezium, but sometimes it can take other shape. So, but the shape it takes is equal to the distance, total distance covered or traveled by the body in question. So, thank you very much for this class. In further classes, we will meet again.